I'm Wendy Dietrich. I'm the chair of the Mayor's Commission on Disability Concerns, and I'd like to welcome you all here. I just wanted to take a few minutes before introducing our keynote speaker to talk about today's theme, productivity. It only takes one, so be that one. Tempe loves to be the first one to break new ground, being the first one to make things better for our residents, the first one to bring people together for good, it, and it only takes one person to change a life. It only takes one program to make a difference in the quality of life. It only takes one employment opportunity to start a career. So be the one. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Be the one. I would like to now introduce our keynote speaker, Max Reiser. Dr. Max Reiser. He is the program coordinator for a new city program, Tempe's Building Employment Supports and Training Program, otherwise known as Tempe Best. This is a grant-funded cultural change and employment program supported with a grant from the Arizona Developmental Disabilities Planning Council. Max has worked with individuals with disabilities who are either deaf or hard of hearing or hearing for over 20 years. He has held positions in, in vocational rehabilitation, psychiatric rehabilitation, and executive management. Max has held certification and licensure as a counselor. He has degrees in psychology, counseling, and health science. He completed his doctoral research on informed choice among deaf and hard of hearing vocational rehabilitation clients. In his personal time, he loves to paint with oils, tinker with computers, and spend time with his family and friends. Please welcome Max Reiser, Dr. Max Reiser. Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for coming today. And it's so great to be here with you. And I want to thank the Disability Commission and the mayor as well. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. I promise I'll keep it short and sweet. I know that there's a reception after this, and everyone's looking forward to some food. So I'll keep it short and sweet in that sake, and so we can get out of here on time. All right, I know no one can resist free food, right? Everyone loves free food. Uh, so I'll, like I said, I'll be sure to keep it short and sweet today. You know, it's interesting because uh, in 2012, I drove to Arizona from Illinois. And the first town that I stopped in in Arizona uh, was Tempe. And the reason that I drove from Illinois to Arizona is that I decided to move here. And to be honest with you, it is amazing how beautiful the town was when I first got here. Uh, for a farm, bo farm boy like me to come to Tempe, it was like paradise. And um, there were palm trees, all of that. You have all of that here, things that I've never seen before in my life. Uh, so I'm happy to stand, be standing here in front of you today. And when I moved to Arizona, and I, I think about the amazing opportunities that I have had and the amazing opportunities that are before you here in Arizona, uh, amazing opportunities for my wife and our child, we believe that everything happens for a reason. And let me just say that it, it's amazing how things have worked out thus far for us here in Arizona. So thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I'm happy to be here. When I was first asked to speak today, I started thinking about some different topics for my talk. And I know that today's event would be focusing on the disability community, and so I just let my mind start going and just start thinking of different possible topics for us. 
And as I was thinking, I realized how nice it was to be invited to speak today. And it was so great for me to be here with you today. And it made me look back at all of the people who have helped me become who I am today. And I started thinking about my parents, who made the decision to teach me sign language rather than sending me to a school where I'd be taught to use my voice and to speak. So I have to thank my parents for that decision that they made. I also think about the teachers and the teacher's assistants who have been with me and who worked with me every day in school, um, who taught me how to use spoken language, who taught me how to read and write, and who taught me how to uh, work with people. And I have to thank also those um, who helped me along the way as well, social workers, ASL interpreters who have been there, uh, the man who you're hearing speak for me right now, I have to thank him, uh, and, and everyone who has been there for me while I've been in the mainstream classroom. I also think about all of the professors and academic advisors who helped me through my schooling and through college. Uh, they're really important people. And then it hit me. Um, today's topic, or the theme of today's event, is it only takes one to be the first one. And that got me thinking about what exactly one means. What is one? It could literally mean just one. Like the one finger that I'm raising with my hand right now, just one. It could also mean a community. One can mean many. And I believe that that's the case here today. It took a community of professionals and friends and family members to make me who I am today. Despite the challenges that I faced in the past and the f challenges that I still continue to face. Hence, one can represent a community. It took one community comprised of many people to help me get to where I am today, to ensure that I had opportunities available. It also required one community of many people to be the first in my life, and in many other people's lives as well. And when I say that, when I say it took a community to be the first, I mean that the community takes the first step. So that one community can be comprised of many people. We are in this together as one. We are not just literally one individual, but we are a community. We are one community. And we are standing together as one community. But what is one if we don't have the right attitudes of patience and understanding and perseverance and positivity? What is one without that correct attitude? It's important that in this age of division that we remember that we are all in this together as one. We need to be the first to do something. We need to work together as one community. And again, that's something that a lot of people don't realize, that we always do better when we're thinking of others at all times. Otherwise, we are not able to be successful as a community. So again, one could mean a community. We could be the first community to be there for each other. If you have the right attitude, that will enable the community to act as one and to be there for each other in our lives. So if everyone in this room works together and keeps in mind the other people who are not in this room, we can take that message home, we can leave this room, try to spread that message, and take that message with you wherever you go. And remember that when you're working with others. That message is more important now than ever in today's age and today's society. So again, 
it takes one and be the first one. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me here today. And thanks to the Disability Commission for inviting me. Thank you. Have a great day. So much, Ma Dr. Max. Come back here. We have a thank you for you. Really appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. All right. I need my glasses. Okay, I would now like to introduce a much more polished speaker than myself, our mayor, Mark Mitchell. <laughs> mayor Mitchell is a third generation Arizonan and a native of Tempe. He attended elementary, middle school, and McClintock High School before, uh, here in town. He earned a political science degree from ASU, and before coming, becoming mayor in May 2012, he served three four-year terms on the city council. Mayor Mitchell has also served on numerous boards and charitable organizations. Here we go. The Kiwanis Club of Tempe, the Tempe Diablos, Tempe Leadership Class 15, Tempe Sister Cities, Tempe Impact Education Foundation, the Rio Salado Foundation, then the Tempe YMCA. He's on the board of directors of the Greater Phoenix Economic Council and serves as the city of Tempe's rep on the um, Maricopa Association of Governments Regional Council, the Regional Council Executive Committee, and the Transportation Policy Committee. He also serves on Valley Metro and the Valley Metro Rail Board of Directors. He currently also serves on the Executive Committee for the League of Arizona Cities and Towns and is involved with the U.S. Conference on Mayors and the National League of Cities. He has two daughters, Allison and Sophia. Again, please welcome Mayor Mitchell at our 31st annual awards. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me take my stuff out of here. There's yours. That's you. Well, Wendy, thank you so much. And it truly is an honor to be here. You know. And I want to recognize my council colleagues that are with us here today. We have uh, Council Member Robin Arredondo Savage and Council Member Jennifer Adams. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I want to tell you, the City Council really, this is one of my favorite events that we get to do. Um, it really speaks to the core of who we are as a community and how we care about all of our residents um, in the great city of Tempe. And it's great to be here for the 31st Annual Mayor's Disability Awards. So since 1988, Tempe has presented these prestigious awards honoring the ability, advocacy, access, and achievements. And guess what? We have a great program for you today. Before I get rolling, we want to recognize our city employees who also support disability access and inclusion. Tempe strives for an inclusive and accessible community, and it would not be possible without our great employees. At this time, I want to recognize the Human Resource Department and the groundbreaking work that they have done. They have worked diligently with the Strategic Management and Diversity Office to incorporate changes in our employment hiring policy and to advance disability inclusion. And for this hard work, I would like to invite Rini Broderick, if she can please come down, Lawrence uh, LaVictori, and Kathleen Broman. Could you please all come down? Uh, they represent the Human Resources Department within the city of Tempe, and I do have a proclamation that um, I would like to read on behalf of the city of Tempe, and it states, whereas the city of Tempe recognized that from 2015 and 2016, the number of working age residents with development disabilities rose to over 2,000 individuals, an increase in Tempe's population of 4%, and that there is approximately a 20%, 28% employment rate of people who have development disabilities. And whereas the initiation of Employment First Tempe promotes competitive, integrated employment in the general workforce as the first and preferred outcome for working age residents who have disabilities. An Employment First Tempe mission promotes advocacy and education of people with disabilities 
families, administrators, policy makers, service providers, and agencies to create system change resulting in competitive integrated employment. And whereas an employment first Tempe formally recognizes the system change efforts beginning to benefit people who have developmental and other disabilities by adopting a strengths-based perspective, emphasizing that each person who has a disability offers skills and assets that contribute to the labor force and our local economy. And whereas research shows that there is no cities in Arizona currently designated as an employment first city. And whereas through Tempe's BEST program, funded in part by the Arizona, Arizona Development of Disabilities Planning Council and with the support from the Arizona Employment First Initiative stakeholders, the Arizona Association of People Supporting Employment First Local Chapter, and Tempe's Commission on Disabilities Concerns, the recognition of an Employment First Tempe will proudly serve as the first municipal model of competitive integrated employment here in the state of Arizona. And I'm very excited to say that I, Mark Mitchell, Mayor of Tempe, Arizona, do hereby declare as March 26, 2019, as Employment First Tempe, as a first employment city in this great state of Arizona. Let's hear it up for our great human resources team. Thank you so much. You know, when you came in here today, you saw a few tables with information on Tempe's ADA access and inclusion efforts. So please take a few minutes after this great celebration and visit those tables out in the foyer. We are proud about all the work that is being done in Tempe to further the accessibility. And speaking of being proud, I am especially grateful for all the work done by the Commission on Disability Concerns. The Commission also serves as a host to several activities that include the Hearing Loss Association of Arizona, the Working Adults Chapter, the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Disability Job Fair with Arizona at Work, and the Youth Mock Interview Appalooza. They volunteer hundreds of hours of their own time to make Tempe better for everyone. So please wave so we know that you're all here from the, those organizations I just mentioned. Thank you. They volunteer hundreds of hours of their own time, and they make Tempe better for everyone. So please wave so that we know that you are here, and I'm going to call out uh, the chair, well, Wendy Dietrich, our vice chair, Dr. Catherine Schmidt, Ben Campbell, Jeff Oates, Miranda Childress, Bethany Lean, Paul Kent, and Renee Williams. Let's give them a round of applause and, and thank them so much for what they do. And also, I want to give a great shout out and thank you to Michelle Stokes, who is our staff liaison for the commission and does a wonderful job moving Tempe forward and our initiatives. So thank you so much, Michelle. Now let me share with you just a few things that Tempe has done recently to improve access and inclusion. Thanks to a grant from the Arizona Community Foundation, we were able to install our first OTO Joy Hearing Loop or induction loop in two meeting rooms at the Tempe Public Library. This technology provides access for people who use hearing aids and cochlear implants. We look forward to adding more hearing loops to the council chambers and other meeting locations. And speaking of grants, Tempe is finishing the ADA Transit Wayfinding Pilot funded through the Gila River Indian Community Gaming Funds. 
This pilot was to develop and evaluate an app to identify bus stops by people who are blind by using electronic beacons that interact with the smartphone. Tempe worked with ASU, the ADA Life Quest Training and Consulting, and with the orientation and mobility specialist, Jay Whipple, on this project. You will also see that Tempe's ADA transition plan is available online. Phase three will be in, a progr in progress later uh, this year. It includes viewing public buildings, parks, and right-of-ways south of Guadalupe. And after the celebration, please feel free to visit Cole Designs Group table out in the Fourier to receive more information on this project. We have a new program that will be starting soon. The Human Services Department in Arizona at Work, Maricopa County, are developing inclusive youth workplace learning opportunities. It is for young people with disabilities to participate in paid workplace experiences and to gain work skills, explore careers, and support city operations. Information on this project will be available very soon as well. And our adapted recreation program features Special Olympics with eight sports year-long for youth ages eight and older. And the Friday night social activities are the first two Fridays of every month and our LEAP program is an after-school program for middle school and high school students. And our Camp Challenge program is an eight-week summer-long program for five to 21-year-olds. We offer adaptive Zumba and kayaking, and we'll be adding more to this roundup very soon. These are just a few of the things that are happening in the great city of Tempe. We are committed to improving access and full inclusion for everyone in all that we do. You can find out more information on the www.tempe.gov forward slash ADA as well. So now I have a little surprise before we go forward. We wanna say thank you to Irene Merkel. Can I please have Irene, can you please come over here? Irene's very special. And Irene has served as a commissioner on the Commission on Disability Concerns and in other cap uh, capacities since 2001. That's 18 years. She has been involved in this event and disability issues citywide for even longer than those 18 years. And so now we just wanted to tell you thank you, Irene, and give you a little token of our appreciation. And thank you for everything that you have done for the city of Tempe as it relates to um, our mayor's disability awards and disability concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I say anything? <laughs> Another group of folks that we want to thank is our sponsors. The Tempe Diablo Charities, Cole Design Group, Irene, Amy, and Lynn Mokel, Stephanie Miller and Nance Kelfi, A Caring Heart of Arizona LLC, the Believe I Can Academy, and the Schmidt family. And of course, we want to thank and recognize Bobby Flowers. And now for the awards. Frank Cohen, could you please come back up? Frank is the president of the Tempe Diablos. He's joining me presenting scholarships uh, for the outstanding students and outstanding youth and our Exceptional Educator Awards. And I also want to recognize Doug Black and the Tempe Diablos for what they've done to help sponsor this event for many, many years. So thank you to the Tempe Diablos as well. So let's get started with the Outstanding Tempe High School Student Award. Outstanding high school students, as we call your name, please make your way down to the stage on the right to receive your award. And we want to get a great picture of us, so please hang out with us to get a picture. And we are privileged to present the Tempe student winners with a gift provided by the Tempe Diablos. Our first award winner is an outstanding student, Madison Knowles. Come on down to Madison. Madison, Miss Knowles is a senior at Tempe High School, always the first to cheer on her peers. Madison loves making new friends. She has been an active member of Shades and participates in all social activities. She has been an active member of Shades she is an artist, and even her artwork makes her people cheerful. It's hard not to grin when she greets you at the door with a great big smile, asking if you want to join her in an activity. Let's hear it for Madison. Congratulations, Madison. 
next, our next outstanding student is Anthony Mendoza. Let's hear it for Anthony. All right. Anthony's teacher, Jennifer Lawrence, says that he is one of the hardest working students she has had in her, that she's ever had in her 22 years of teaching at Tempe High. She says, I don't think anyone that Anthony has ever entered or left my classroom without saying hello or goodbye. Is that true, Anthony? All right. Nice to meet you, Anthony. And four years later, I'm not sure if he does this for him, but for us, either way, his actions are making a huge impact on her teaching as well. So what Anthony does by saying hi to everyone makes a big impact on everyone in the classroom. Sounds like Anthony has it not only what it takes one, but pat down. Anthony's teacher also says Anthony hates to miss school. For most students, if someone stops to talk to them and the bell rings, they will let the conversation continue and ask for a late pass. Rather than cut them off, not Anthony. Following the rules that Anthony, Anthony does, getting to class is so important to Anthony that there have been many times that I have gotten the palm held up for me to say, uh, excuse me, Miss Lawrence, the bell rang. I have to get to class. I will talk to you later. I have to go. And there he goes. Way to go, Anthony. And now we award Manny Navia from Tempe High School. His teacher says that Manny has blessed the room with his gentle soul for the last four years. He is one of those guys who is almost always happy and willing to go with the flow. He is supportive of those around him and enjoys a good laugh. He will be incredibly missed by those at school, especially in shades. He has been working hard to carve his path after graduation. And while his ideal job would be working at Popeye's, he has been applying also at Peter Piper Pizza. So let's give Manny a round of applause. And it's his birthday today. The next award goes to Raphael Penny. Raphael will be graduating this year from Tempe High School. He has not kept it a secret that he only that only certain people are allowed into Raphael's world. His teacher, Jennifer Lawrence, says, I have been honored to be one of those privileged enough to be welcomed over the past five years. It has been a wonderful experience watching him grow from a timid teen to a self-confident young man. Raphael has been an active member of Shades and is one of the best classroom helpers a teacher could ever dream of. From lamenting to bake birthday cake treats, from making coffee to keeping the class on schedule, Raphael has learned to do it all and takes his job seriously. Congratulations, Raphael. And now we welcome Nemo Guhud of Tempe High School. Her teacher says Nemo has proven to be an exceptional student in many ways during the four years that I've known her. She was born in Kenya and is the oldest of nine children. Nemo has, hard, has had to work extraordinarily hard to get where she is today. Not only has she maintained an above average GPA while taking honor classes and IB classes, she has been an active member in Abbott, Teen Court, and a mentor in Shades, supporting her peers with the extra needs with the social communication skills. And all of her hard work is paying off. She has recently scored herself a scholarship to none other than Arizona State University. Her goal is to go into the medical field and continue helping those in need. Let's give Nemo a round of applause. And now I'd like to welcome high school student Mary Catherine Haynes. Her teacher, Sarah Davis, says, when Mary, came, when Mary Kate came to Believe I Can Academy, her mom said that traditional school was not a good fit. They did not challenge her academically, and she did not work. Then, at, I, at Believe I Can Academy, she blew their socks off. She started reading, blew through chapter books and beyond. She is their note taker when they do group work and a leader when they go out into the community. She has developed independence and responsibility. Mary Kate, as she is known, is now 19 and is proud to have Down syndrome. And if you ask her, she will let you know it does not stop her. Is that true? She just started speech and occupational therapy, and when it gets tough, she powers on. She's determined to become independent, be employed, and secure an apartment on her own. She may be small, but she is very mighty. 
Let's give a round of applause to Mary Kate. Now help me welcome Sophie Stern from McClintock High School and Believe I Can Academy. Sophie is a natural leader. She has been performing in the Center Dance Ensemble's Snow Queen at the Herberger Theater Center in Phoenix every holiday season since she was eight. This is the second year she is competing in the National Society of Arts and Letters, the annual modern dance competition. So please take note that they are not specialized for individuals within, with disabilities. She has spoken on behalf of herself and individuals with Down syndrome at Conley Middle School and McClintock High School. Her public speaking does not stop there. She has spoken at Changing Hands Bookstore in Tempe and interviews for the Arizona Republic and National Public Radio. Sophie is a performer in the Detour Company. This organization is inclusive. The actors have intellectual and developmental and other disabilities. Sophie has had the roles of South Pacific, Happy Days, The Adams Family, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor, Dreamcoat, and Legally Blonde, just to name a few. She has cheered with the Tempe Special Olympics and is now on the unified team. She is working this year as a coach for the traditional team. She is always striving to better herself and supports others. Let's hear it for Sophie. Now for the Outstanding Youth Award, we recognize William Chapnick. <laughs> William Chapnick attends Believe I Can Academy and volunteers to help younger kids at Believe I Can Academy. In the summer, he is a leader when cleaning the Tempe History Museum. He knows where the chairs go and how to organize those chairs, and he knows how to break down the tables and where they go in the back room. Will is also a freshman at Mountain Point High School and is on the swim team. He is a multiple gold and silver medal winner in the Special Olympics swimming. He is competitive, and he wants to win. He wins like a champion, and he loses like a champion. He is the original attendee of Believe I Can Academy and is a founding team of the teen group. He advocates for individuals with Down syndrome, stating, I am not Down syndrome. I have Down syndrome, and it doesn't stop me. I am good at swimming, basketball, math, and Uno. And he also likes to trash talk a little bit with Miss Addie. And backgammon, where he says he beats his mom and dad all the time. He wants to be a police officer or a cooker like Guy Ferreri. Let's give a round of applause to William Chapnick. Now please help me honor Michael Warner, an exceptional educator from Tempe High School. Mike Warner has been a teacher at Tempe High for 20 years. That makes it hard to believe that education was not his first career, nor was it his second. Mr. Warner started out as a military man and then moved into the airline business. It was while he was working for the airlines that he decided to go into education. While employed by Tempe High, Mr. Warner has been a math teacher, a science teacher, a photography teacher, and a film studies teacher. However, he is not being nominated based on his teaching skills within the four walls of the classroom, but for what he does with the students outside the classroom. For 15 years, Mike has been the sponsor of the Robotics Club on campus. Uh, it only takes one. Mike has served as a vital part of the special education classroom, working with students, inventing new tools, sharing information, but this year it has become something extraordinarily special. When he heard about a student who needed to make up a science credit, without hesitation, he became the lead in getting a class garden planted and growing. Now, two years ago, Mr. Warner retired, but has returned to teach just one class, and most importantly, participate in the special needs classroom every day to ensure that things are getting done for the garden. Not only does he teach the students gardening, he spends time teaching them how to problem solve when the need arises. The students thoroughly enjoy this attention and the wealth of information. And Jennifer Lawrence says that I have noticed a big difference in my students after working with Mr. Warner. We thank you on behalf of the Tempe Diablos for your continued support of scholarships for our sounding Tempe students. I want to thank you, Mr. Warner, for everything you've done to help make these kids special.
Now, please welcome the Employee of the Year, Joseph C. Steele III, who works with the City of Tempe Special Olympics and LEAP. We have another individual who falls in the It Only Takes One category. Joe Steele exemplifies what it means to be a dedicated city employee of Tempe's Adaptive Recreation Program and Special Olympics. Affectionately known as Coach Joe, he started with Tempe a couple of years ago, taking a part-time position as a second job in the LEAP program. Since then, due to the tremendous passion he found, he switched careers, joining, going from being an auditor for 12 years at Sam's Club to become a paraprofessional at a day school for kids with profound autism the day, during the day and while working with the joy at LEAP and Special Olympics events in the evenings. Now, for the Community Service Awards, I want to give Joseph a great round of applause. So let's give Joseph a great round of applause for Employee of the Year. And now for our Community Service Awards to Jay Whipple. Jay is a humble, hardworking advocate for individuals with disabilities and especially with those who experience vision loss. He's worked in the community for many years and has volunteered his time to assist with an important collaborative effort between the City of Tempe, ASU, and LifeQuest Training and Consulting. The Gila River Indian Community Grant funded the ADA Wayfinding Pilot Program with his project. He has helped to evaluate the effectiveness of wayfinding beacons using the Tempe Transit Center as an evaluation baseline. When Jay first volunteered to be part of the Grick Wayfinding Project, he had no idea it would span to over almost two years. Even as he got busier in his personal and professional life, he remained committed to helping ensure an effective evaluation of the developing wayfinding app. Working on the ADA wayfinding project was exciting for Jay, and Jay hopes to the work, uh, work towards using this type of technology to assist individuals everywhere. And he's always willing to share his knowledge and expertise with others. So, Jay, congratulations and thank you. And now for the Tom Ringhofer Architectural Award. Landscape architect Jeffrey W. Sherman. Please come down, Jeffrey. Jeffrey was nominated for volunteering his services in creating the conceptual design for the Tempe Lake Park Paracourse. Jeffrey Sherman has over 40 years of extensive experience in landscape architecture, urban design, facility planning, and design. Um, one of the hallmarks of a great modern and advanced society is the ability to provide recreational opportunities to everyone in the community. The Tempe Lake Paracourse design that Jeffrey Sherman provided incorporates a design that celebrates all abilities, abilities that include mobility, tactile, vibrational, scent elements, sensory experiences, and an educational component. This space reflects sound, it provides touch and feel experiences, sensory gardens, and sound nodes that will enhance the paracourse fitness experience in a beautiful configuration. Jeff Sherman, former CDC commissioner, donated the proposed conceptual design of the Tempe Lake Paracourse that the Commission on Disability Concerns recommended to be included in the Rio Salado Master Plan. Let's give him a round of applause to Mr. Jeffrey Sherman. Thank you. And now for the Pride of the City Award. Mr. Paul Benowitz, Sr., has spent his entire life, come on down, Paul. Paul has spent his entire life working to create a community that includes those with disability, such as his son, Paul Jr. His late wife, and he has worked diligently to advocate for their son's rights and the rights of other individuals like Paul Jr. Together, along with a group of other parents in the same situation, he founded the Ark of Tempe. This group originally advocated for inclusive education, and they won. They are the reason why Tempe School District has educational programs for children and young teens. Once his son was older, he realized that there were little to no programs in place to continue his son's education or help him to continue to participate in the community. That is when the Ark of Tempe formed into a rec recreational program for young and older adults. His work still creates an impact in the community today. 
Paul served to further the mission of inclusion for those with disabilities, including the Ark of Tempe, and served 14 years on the Commission on Disability Concerns, and even more. He throws an annual swim party for all adults with IDD, and everyone is invited. So thank you, Paul, for everything that you have done. Congratulations. A round of applause for all of our recipients. Thank you so much. And I'm going to hand it back over to Wendy. All right. Thanks again. And uh, congratulations to all. And thank you all for coming to this afternoon.